Hotel viewers, especially kids and parents, welcome to Agamazing TV. I am Sir Jesse Guzman and I will be your teacher in Science 5. Are you ready to explore the enchanting world of science? Now, let's... Hello kids, Sir Jesse here. In this lesson, we will discuss the interactions of organisms to their physical environment. Specifically, this part of the module will give you different activities that will describe interactions in estuaries and intertidal zones. Life on Earth is a product of different interactions in a region of geographic area where both biotic factors and abiotic factors work together. This area is called ecosystem. Living things can sustain life without non-living things. Let us discuss first the estuaries. It is the body of water near the coast where the fresh water from water from rivers and stream flows into the, into the ocean, mixes with salt water. In the Philippines, we have here Puerto Princesa in Palawan, is known for its estuaries. Many different habitat types are found in and around estuaries, including shallow open waters, fresh water and salt marshes, swamps, sandy beaches, mud, sand flats, rocky shores, oyster reefs, mangrove forests, river deltas, tidal pools, and sea grasses. We have major types of estuaries. We have here coastal plain estuaries, tectonic estuaries, the bar built estuaries and the George F. estuaries. Let us now focus on the coastal estuaries. Are formed by the sea level rising and filling an existing river valley. They created or formed when sea levels rise and fall in existing rivers. One of the examples in the Philippines is the San Miguel Bay in Naga City. Second, we have the bar built estuaries form when a shallow lagoon or bay is protected by the ocean by the sandbar or the barrier island. Example for this is the lagoon in the Coron, Palawan. And the Anawagin Cove in Sambales. Third, we have the tectonic estuaries are caused by folding or faulting of land surfaces. These estuaries are found along major fault lines like the San Francisco Bay in California. This results from a major crack or the rifting part of the earth crust often caused by earthquakes create tectonic estuaries. George are U-shaped valleys formed by glacial action. George are found in areas with long histories of glacier activity like Northern Europe, Alaska, and Canada. According to ecologists, the estuaries are divided to three different tidal zones. We have the supra-tidal zones, the intertidal zones, and the sub-tidal zones. Let us now focus first on the supra-tidal zones, also known as the splash zones, spray zone, or the supra-tidal zone sometimes also referred to as the white stone or the white beach is the area above the spring tide 
line on the coastlines and the estuaries that is regularly splashed but not submerged by the ocean water. In short, this is found in a shore. The intertidal zone, second, is the area where the ocean meets the land between the high and the low tides. Third, we have the subtidal zone or the sublittoral zone. Is the region below the intertidal zone is the continuously covered by water. This zone is much more stable than the intertidal zone. Temperature, water pressure, and sunlight radiation remain nearly constant. Organisms do not dry out as often as organisms higher on the beach. In short, this is found in the depth of the ocean. Let us now focus on the intertidal zones. There are different kinds of intertidal habitats including rocky shores, mangrove swamps, and the sandy beaches. The sandy beaches and the mangrove swamps require very different adaptations from rocky shores. There is a large community of organisms inhabiting most sandy beaches. However, the number of species represented is very limited. The shifting land and the rapid changing conditions makes it difficult to live in this habitat. The intertidal zone, also known as the littoral zone, or the foreshore and the seashore is the area between the high tide and the low tide. It can be divided with the subzones, spray zones, upper intertidal zones, mid intertidal zones, and the lower intertidal zones that we, that we will discuss later. But what is the importance of intertidal zone? The intertidal or the littoral zone maintains a balance between the land and the sea. It provides a home to specially adapted marine plants and animals. Those organisms in turn serve as food for many or other animals. The intertidal zone also stops up erosion caused by storms. Let us now focus on the types of intertidal zones. So we have the spray zone or the highest zone of true marine life. This is found in the shore. It is usually only kept damp through wave splash. Organisms surviving this environment, the barnacles, limpets, and the periwinkles. Periwink This is found in the shore during low tide. Organisms exposed to the air here must be able to prevent desiccation. Many have protective coverings as, such as shell. Organisms exposed to the air here must be able to prevent desiccation or drying out. Many have protective covering such as a shell. Second one, we have the upper intertidal zones. The upper intertidal zone is the only covered by water at high tide. Any al algae grow is green and the zone is characterized by barnacles, limpet, chitons, crabs, mussels, sea stars, and periwinkles. Animals in more exposed locations tend to have a thicker shells, urban steel, than those in the sheltered location. 
Likewise, many intertidal organisms such as barnacles, limpets, and chitons have low profiles close to the rocks. Next, we have the middle intertidal zone. It's the regularly covered by water. The seaweed is more preeminent. Organisms in this zone include anemones, barnacles, crab, mussels, sea stars, gastropods, and sponges. The middle intertidal zone is the most dynamic zone. It is covered and uncovered twice per day as the tide comes in and out. Life in the zone must tolerate both exposure to air and complete submersion. The middle intertidal zone is the most dynamic zone. It is covered and uncovered twice per day. Lastly, we have the lower intertidal zone. It's usually submerged only being exposed at the very low tides. The lower intertidal zone is usually submerged only by exposed at the very low tides. This zone is characterized by brown algae and crusting sponges, abalone, sea stars, crabs, sea cucumbers, gastropods, and the sea urchins. Small fish may also inhabit this area. Here is the abundance of different species here including the fish and the sea seal feeders such as corals. This is found in the depth of the ocean. These are the organisms that found in the intertidal zones. They must develop a special adaptation to survive until the tide comes in again. When the high tides aren't very big, plants and animals which live high on the shore may be exposed to air for several days. Organisms which live very low on the shore may only occasionally be exposed to the air. These are the disadvantages of intertidal zones. And what are the importance of intertidal zones and estuaries? The estuaries are the unique and the important natural environments. Intertidal zones and estuaries at the sandy shore provides important feeding grounds for shorebirds as well as the food supplies of many animals. Those organisms in turn serve as the food for many other animals. How do we protect our intertidal zone? First, don't dump your trash overboard. Dispose properly and recycle. Maintain your boats to reduce oil leaks. Keep your boat or authorized water traps out of the sensitive areas like seagrass beds. Install and maintain marine sanitation devices on your boat. And lastly, use designated pump-out stations. That ends my discussion. I hope that you will learn something today. Again, this is Sir Jessica Sman saying, Be an explorer, be a discoverer, be an amazing you. This is Agamazing TV. Thank you.